all parents definitely want their child to be super smart now i'm not saying i'm going to help you make einstein uh, you know or uh, you know the next ratan tata or ambani or birla that's not the idea the idea is that whatever brain development has to happen let's make it as optimal as possible the next thing is an ideal birth weight i'm sure whenever you've gone with your mother or mother in law to visit any woman in the hospital who's had a baby they ask three questions right um the first question is uh, is the uh, is it a boy or a girl the second question they want to know is was it a vaginal birth or a c section and the third question that they want to ask is um you know what is the weight of the baby now why is it that they want to know the weight of the baby because in their head the weight of the baby actually signifies the health of the baby right so more the weight the more the health which is not true but generally indian babies are born between 2.5 to 3.5 kilos and this of course also depends on your genetics you cannot expect a petite mama and a petite papa to get a nice big 3 and a half kilo baby you'll have a smaller baby which is normal that is if the father is really tall and the mother is also really tall the baby will also be bigger so that's what the weight factor is but at least 2 and a half kilos your baby has to cross which is something which is extremely essential so when you are eating healthy the baby does get to the ideal birth weight if the baby is underweight chances of you know uh, complications post delivery uh, health issues illnesses are high also delivery becomes difficult because the baby is weak and if the baby is overweight post delivery there is obesity as the child is growing up etc and delivery also becomes difficult you have a normal size pelvis and it is going to take a normal size baby so your labor and delivery also depends on the ideal birth weight and then of course there is for the mother and if you see i have listed so many things for the mother right so a healthy and safe pregnancy that's something which is extremely important when we're looking at pregnancy there can be various issues that come up and these are you know due to various pregnancy changes but uh, things like gestational diabetes thyroid hypertension if the mother is eating healthy maintaining a healthy lifestyle chances are that she won't go through all of these issues another thing is the baby comes in on time we consider pregnancy to be 40 weeks which is 9 months and 7 days however full term is considered to be anywhere between 37 so if the baby reaches week 37 and beyond we say that okay now if the baby is born it's fine so we need the baby to get there anything before that the baby might need the nicu and that's not something which is isn't it so keep that in perspective uh making sure that you eat right creates the optimal environment for the baby to ensure that the baby stays inside for the entire term of pregnancy the birth experience is also positive right when you are healthy you are able to go for your jog you are able to do all your housework you are able to go to work you are able to do so many things isn't it so if you maintain a healthy lifestyle during your pregnancy even during labor and delivery you'll be able to manage those labor pains easier i'm not going to sit here and tell you oh labor is cool you'll be able to get through it it's painless no i'm not telling you that labor is difficult but it is very manageable and it's normal which is why making you healthy is important and then there are those famous pregnancy hormones If there are any husbands here, any dads here, I'm sure they will vouch for that fact that during pregnancy, many women kind of get a little cranky, little irritable, little you know, uh, unreasonable, all of those things, and this is because of pregnancy hormones. But these hormones can also be controlled with a healthy lifestyle. So that's something which becomes really, really important. and the last one is obviously one of my favorites which is optimal weight gain if i gain the right amount of weight i will obviously not have all the pregnancy complications and post delivery i'll be able to lose that weight also really easily so keep that in perspective because we do want you to be that hot mama 
and not carry around like a lot of pregnancy weight, right? Now, during pregnancy, you need about 300 extra calories. Uh, what does this look like? This could be two extra rotis, uh, a bowl of vegetable, and maybe a cup of milk. That's it. That is what totals up to 300 extra calories. And the same rule will apply for breastfeeding. Because during pregnancy, baby is feeding inside your stomach. post delivery baby is feeding at your breast. So overall, it's the mother who is feeding the baby. Now, how do we balance the meals? The important part is to balance meals. We all eat healthy. I'm sure you'll tell me, oh, I eat roti satsi or I had fish curry and rice. So yeah, it's healthy, but it is not balanced. That is what is important. So we have to make sure that we have all the different food groups in. And that is what is essential. That is what is required. So the first item on your agenda is what we call your carbohydrates. Now, when we're looking at the carbohydrates, Sorry. Yeah, when we're looking at the carbohydrates, the main focus over here is your cereals. Carbohydrates are going to be there in a lot of things. It's not that it's only cereals, but the main source is always cereals. And uh, that's the main idea. So whether it's rice, roti, roti made of wheat, javar, bajra, oats, Idli, samba, idli, dosa, uttapam, uh, you know, maybe poha, upma, all these are your cereals. And this is something which makes up your carbohydrates. You need a minimum of six servings a day. And this is really easy. So two in the morning, two in the afternoon and two at night. And a little bit extra that can happen in the evening when you're hungry. It's a good idea to choose healthy carbohydrates. So choose all the unrefined grains. Right. So if you are a bread person, brown bread, uh, if you are eating rice, try to opt for brown rice. So choose healthy carbohydrates. Don't choose the refined carbohydrates. And in the evening, especially when you're eating, you should avoid things like biscuits and etc. Because those are just empty calories, with a lot of negative uh, foods in it. Right. Carbohydrates are required for overall fetal development. And that is something which is extremely important. Because if you've ever been in like a weight loss agenda before you were pregnant, the carbohydrates have a bad name. They say the carbohydrates make you just necessarily gain weight. And to lose weight, you should cut out on carbohydrates. But that's not something which is necessary and should not be done during pregnancy. Then comes your fruits and vegetables. And... Uh, your fruits and vegetables are something which says that uh, these are your binge foods, right? You can eat a lot of these. Like if you're hungry, I would suggest that this is where you should go. You should eat uh, fruits and vegetables as your first option. Now, whenever you're choosing this, we choose a wide variety. When we choose a wide variety, the whole idea is that uh, don't stick to just one or two fruits and one or two vegetables just because you like them. because if you see, look at the colors. There, there's this vibrant colors. The more colors you have in your diet, the more nutrients you're getting, right? We suggest a minimum of two fruits and a minimum of three servings of vegetables in a day. Now, how do you understand these servings? Each serving is 100 grams, which means that you are going to take about 500 grams of fruits and vegetables you in a day. Right. So make sure that you have a lot of this. And then if you're more hungry and if you need to have something extra in the day, you can add a salad. You can have an extra fruit because these are a rich source of vitamins and minerals. And this actually helps to support your pregnancy. So this is very important. This is very essential. And you should definitely make sure that you consume an adequate amount of these. One additional suggestion here would be that always choose something which is seasonal. Like right now, if mangoes are not in season, then mangoes is not something that you should be eating right now. Whatever is fresh and whatever is in season and wide variety of colors is going to be your game plan for fruits and vegetables. Then we're going to come to proteins. 
proteins are considered to be your building blocks of cells and uh, you know i remember i said baby is a single cell becomes trillions of cells so proteins is what is going to help that and hey here's the secret right protein also helps in the mental growth so especially in the third trimester you should make sure that you're having adequate proteins because it's going to help your baby's brain development too the goal here is about 75 grams per day for an average woman maybe a little lesser if you are petite but approximately 75 grams a day is what the goal is now for vegetarians life is a little tough because proteins actually if you look at a bowl of dal it can be about 4 to 5 grams if you look at a fistful of nuts it could be about 7 to 8 grams um uh, one egg has about 6 grams so you can imagine how much you have to eat to ensure that you reach that 75 grams total meat is obviously a lot easier because you know you can a piece of meat uh, either fish or chicken of this size the size of your palm will equivalent to about 15 to 16 grams of protein which can get you up in that number game really well right uh, if you are a fish eater that's great uh, but you should have only two to three times in a week because fish can carry mercury which can in which in excess can become a problem the next thing we come to is calcium now calcium is very very important for optimal bone and teeth development and that's something which all of us know right i mean even as young children we were told have your milk is it your haddiyan mazboot hogi you know your bones will become strong or your teeth will break if you don't have your glass of milk we've been told that but additionally calcium also helps in optimal muscle and nervous system development especially the heart muscle so all the entire human body is made of muscle too right so when your baby is being formed in the womb calcium plays a very important role now the best source of calcium is obviously milk or milk products and it's about 600 ml of milk in milk products that we are requiring you to take every day i know you're taking your calcium pills but this is over and above the calcium pill this does not replace the calcium pill or the calcium pill does not replace this during pregnancy your requirement is really high so we need to make sure that your bone density doesn't drop which is why you should consume this amount every day now you can have milk you can have curds you can have lassi paneer cheese all of these items are allowed um, you don't need full cream milk that's the only difference between full cream and skimmed milk is the fat content so you can go ahead and have uh, you know your skimmed milk as well or your skimmed milk products it's perfectly okay there are some plant sources like green leafy vegetables a grain like natchi sesame seeds jaggery etc which can also give you some calcium but the content is low as compared to you know milk and milk products so unless you are lactose intolerant you should not look at other sources you should look at milk as your primary source of calcium uh and if you are lactose intolerant if it is a problem for you to consume the you know the the dairy then you should consult a nutritionist so that you have a plan for the same uh the next item on our agenda is fats oils and sweeteners that's our favorite right especially in this season where everybody is celebrating and of course we are not allowed to go out and we are still taking care and not and doing all the social distancing part but still at home then we'll say okay at least at home i can have right but it's a good idea to consume this in moderation because when you have too much of fatty and oily food it can also lead to acidity indigestion weight gain there are a lot of those things but a little amount is always welcome because that will help you to digest all your fat soluble vitamins so try and use unsaturated fats such as olive oil flax seeds walnuts all of these are great options which you can include in your diet on a regular basis uh we all love sweets uh but we should also remember that sweets and desserts should always be shared so you should have always have a tiny portion you should not have a large quantity of sweets so little indulgence is okay if your pregnancy is healthy if you have a condition like gestational diabetes excessive weight gain then you should definitely ensure that you don't uh, have too much of the sweets 
these are also called nutrients uh, so there's water which is very important during pregnancy the recommendation is 8 to 10 glasses as a minimum it will help your digestion and you know the baby lives in amniotic fluid i'm sure you've heard that statement the amniotic fluid is also water and the water intake that you take will help to keep the amniotic fluid levels normal so lots of benefits as far as water is concerned i know you feel like peeing a lot when you have water but that's no excuse to avoid water so make sure you have plenty of fluids uh, salt should be taken in moderation but a little amount is definitely required avoid processed foods because these kind of have too much of salt which is in excess and then that can lead to fluid retention and edema your supplements which have been prescribed by the doctor have to be taken without fail you don't have a choice even if you feel that oh my i am following such a healthy diet so nari has done a great job and she explained everything to me and i'm going to eat everything that she said but still we have only 9 months to make that perfect baby and therefore we have to ensure that we take the supplements because the supplements get absorbed directly into our bloodstream now the doctor in the beginning of your pregnancy would have definitely prescribed folic acid and a multivitamin uh, as pregnancy progresses between 12 and 16 weeks we start you off on calcium and iron the folic acid and the multivitamin might continue depending on your doctor's preference uh, somewhere in the third trimester your doctor may add omega 3 and uh, that's how your supplements would continue if there is any other nutrient deficiency the supplement will be added so you could uh, need to take a, a b12 the d3 uh, depending on whatever is required right if a particular supplement does not suit you just make sure that you let your doctor know don't avoid taking it you know because many times mothers will say iron makes me feel like really bloated i don't feel like taking it, it makes me feel nauseous Yeah, agreed. It's quite possible, or maybe I don't think you constipated. Agreed, definitely possible. But that doesn't mean you don't take it. What it means is you go back to your doctor and you tell your doctor that doctor, this particular supplement is not suiting me. Can I have an alternative? Trust me, there are so many brands out there. We'll be able to find a brand that definitely suits you. So all you have to do is ask. These are foods that you're going to avoid. uh foods like raw meat because this can kind of you know cause infections so even if you feel that any meat that you're eating is undercooked just don't eat it okay soft cheeses and unpasteurized milk that means if you have a buffalo or a cow at home you're not going to drink milk directly right it has to be pasteurized uh the regular cheeses that we get in the indian market are fine but all the foreign cheeses are best avoided at this point of time raw eggs uh these also sneak in into some foreign desserts like your chocolate mousse etc so be careful because again these are also going to cause infection possibilities fish in excess is also something that needs to be avoided uh two three times a week is fine otherwise extra mercury level is not very welcome it can cause brain damage caffeine is i know it's a quick fix so yeah one my morning cup of tea or coffee Uh, if you can avoid it it's always better but otherwise limit it to that one cup because caffeine does get into your blood stream it can make the baby super perky it will interfere with iron absorption and it will also cause frequent urination and that's something we want to avoid right during pregnancy and of course it goes without saying that you're not going to have alcohol and any other forms of drugs definitely i'm sure you know that um and a point here to be noted is no smoking as well and if there is anybody in your family who is smoking then uh, second hand smoke is also dangerous for you so you should definitely avoid uh, that too and tell them no smoking in the same room in the same house please leave and smoke outside These are some controversial foods uh papaya and pineapple they have a bad name having having it in really small portions for a healthy pregnancy a ripe apple is not really harmful uh dates uh, they're not heaty uh, but they are definitely high in sugar so you can't have a lot of them so maybe having one or two dates is okay uh many times mothers don't have dates because they're dark and people tell them that if you have dark colored foods you're going to have a dark baby that's not really true coconut water is not going to make the baby's head large like a coconut it's not going to cause acidity it's not
hair. Neither is it going to make the baby fair, right? So all of these are definitely uh, myths. And the uh, ghee in excess is not going to make you stronger. It's not going to make the baby stronger. It's also not going to go and line your birth canal and make the whole labor process very, very easy. Yes, it will definitely make you fat. And post delivery, it's not going to create more milk. It's not going to kind of, you know, uh, create any kind of uh, uh, benefits as far as your health is concerned. But ghee is, is good in small quantities. It's definitely better than vegetable oils. So if you want to put a little ghee on your roti or a little ghee in your biryani or, you know, maybe just cook your food in a little ghee, that's perfectly all right. But it's a fat just like anything else and it should be had in moderation. Um, so that is uh, my information on diet and nutrition. And I'm sure you're going to be having a lot of questions for me. I can see on the panel that uh, Dr. Bhavna has joined us. Uh, hi, doctor. Good morning. Hi there. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, would you like to address the audience, ma'am? Yeah, you know, uh, a very good morning to all of them who, are, who joined us at the webinar. Now, uh, uh, I basically, I mean, you know, will uh, wanted to cover up about uh, uh, ladies who are, who, who are concerned after soon after their you know the delivery about um, the postpartum kind of care that uh, you know one expects now um, so uh, there is no evidence basically that uh, you know soon after a lady has given birth that she is at increased risk of contracting uh, infection so we are talking about postpartum care in times of covid especially uh, uh, so, uh, and there is no evidence that a newborn baby can seriously can have serious, uh, you know, effects of this. Even if uh, it contracts, uh, um, and now the basic element that we've been speaking about, like. Um, uh, you know, washing hands frequently or uh, wearing a mask, uh, social distancing, all that has to be followed. Now, uh, <clears throat> there is no uh, contraindication that, uh, uh, you know, even if a lady is COVID positive, should not feed the baby uh, for this re very reason. She can So breastfeeding uh, unless contraindicated. Now there are few do's, do's and don'ts that we would want to emphasize on before and the baby or touching the baby. It is uh, uh, you know, recommended that uh, and the mother washes her hands properly. She uh, so it is before she touches the the bottles and the breast pumps, etc. Now uh, having said that, uh, the, the, she has to follow the period advice the way uh, you know about breastfeeding about the frequency that she has to follow um, and all that now uh, before that she should uh, like you know you've been covering all through she has to and she has advised here now coming to breastfeeding per se she uh, should uh, you know feed at regular intervals so uh, as uh, directed by the pediatrician and a team of doctors so most of us uh, do recommend a demand feeding at least every two to three hours she must uh, try feeding the baby she should wash her hands well uh, hold the baby and while doing that make sure that she's having a mask which properly covers her nose and the mouth area and uh, uh, then uh, you know she should avoid directly sneezing or coughing at that time uh, more so I, I just forgot to you know talk about something which is so important around you know the event of uh, uh, your baby's arrival is that we there are a lot of guests coming in there's a lot of gathering uh, there's a lot of functions that are held so at least in today's uh, era of this pandemic we should totally discourage such an event not uh, you know uh, 
uh, make sure that the place is not crowded with people. Uh, now, um, if what if a mother is turned COVID positive? What is she supposed to do? Now, before she touches the baby, it is recommended that she washes the hands thoroughly, properly, with uh, you know a soap for about twenty seconds, and then um, so uh, so she, uh, before handling her bottles and breast pump, etc., she should uh, not uh, wear a mask, preferably a three ply you know the surgical mask or uh, N95 mask and uh, make sure that her mouth and the nose is properly covered. Uh, then uh, she should not directly sneeze or cough over the baby. And if she is, uh, you know, either pumping the breast milk out uh, or, uh, you know, uh, gives it to the baby in a bottle, then uh, she should make sure that someone who is not uh, COVID positive should handle such a thing like some uh, one of our family members or someone can help in this part participate and give it to the baby. Now if, if uh, during this entire process of breast feeding and taking care if she sees that the baby has feeding, then uh, just uh, uh, information immediately and um, so it, it is you know that we otherwise also recommend for mothers uh, we can sail through this period uh, safely so stay safe all of you and uh, now I, would, uh, I think I would hand it over to the next speaker here uh, who is Dr. Sunil Ishwar from our Astro team. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, hi Sonali. Nice presentation though. Mm. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, doctor. Thank you so much. I have kept myself on mute so that I don't disturb you. Okay, great. Uh, yes. So that was good presentation. I think it covered most of it, but then yeah, good. Uh, yeah, hello all who has joined us. Um, what uh, this is a new initiative which we have uh, through Aster RV, which we are starting, where we are trying to engage our uh, expecting mothers or you know planning to be mothers, uh, so that they get the, all the information which is really relevant uh, to make sure that their pregnancy is uh, very safe and taken care. Uh, we will be uh, refining this and probably doing a bit more better, involving more doctors and more of uh, you know support uh, uh, doctors also like the physical therapy and diet and all plus we will also be involving some yoga uh, teachers later on so we do need your active participation and probably uh, your uh, uh, inform your uh, uh, information about how was this and whether any improvement can be done on that. Uh, I would be talking a little bit on antenatal because I think Sonali has already covered most of it as you know antenatal period is divided into three parts what you call as first trimester second trimester and the third trimester first trimester is where the pregnancy is diagnosed and it is up to the third month of pregnancy so this is the most difficult part uh, to start considering that there are lots of changes which happen in the body uh, there is increased amount of vomiting uh, there is lots of vomiting giddiness uh, and uh, body is puffed up, you feel too lethargic, you have giddiness, uh, some people also have fainting attacks. So this is a period where you need to be very cautious as well as uh, you know very careful about making sure you don't harm yourself or to the pregnancy. Uh, what I generally suggest is just vomiting being very common. Uh, so you need to take your food in a very you know limited amount you know quantity of food which you take uh, if you're taking uh, like in uh, Bangalore most of the diet is of idli or dosa so if you're taking two it is probably reduced to one or even to half but eat, uh, try to just sip ml 10 ml use the uh, chance of vomiting another question which uh, most of my antenatal uh, Women ask, yes, getting out of the bed, make sure you turn to one, sit for some time. Don't just get out of the bed. That actually initiates this vomiting or giddiness sensation. So after you get, uh, get up, just turn to one side, sit up for some time, sit for uh, at least uh, 30 seconds to a minute, and then probably you can uh, go out and uh, get out of the bed. Uh, yeah, if morning sickness is really bad, then yes, you need to consult us, and there are some uh, natural remedies which we uh, uh, 
initiate so to reduce the vomiting there are certain blood tests which need to be done at this stage to make sure that your pregnancy and the baby is fine there are few scans here in first trimester one is the uh, confirmation uh, scan which we call it as early pregnancy scan is to make sure that you are conceived properly whether it's a single term or twins pregnancy or sometimes even triplets can happen mm, and whether the baby is viable that means we check for the baby's heartbeat this is the best time and you know the parents are would be parent uh, or the mother hears the sound of, of the baby's heart so it's really overjoying at this time to hear that sound next most important scan comes is at around 12 weeks which you call it as the nt scan or also a first trimester screening scan this is done to rule out some genetic abnormality i would suggest all my mothers not to miss this scan which is generally done between 12 to 14 it's very crucial this timing uh, considering that many of these genetic abnormalities which we talk most common being the down syndrome which can lead to mental retardation in the babies is done at this stage along with this we'll be doing one uh, blood test called as double mark so if you miss that this timing then it becomes a bit more difficult for us to assess the uh, abnormalities or the uh, so once we have crossed this 12 weeks usually you kind of uh, settle down to pregnancy and uh, your symptoms are less your giddiness is less the things are good uh, 12 weeks to 24 weeks generally we consider this as a second trimester again here there will be few blood tests regular visits immunization that is uh, tetanus which we regularly give now along with tetanus we also included uh, uh, tdap so that is with uh, extension to cover diphtheria uh, virus also uh, infection uh, then around 18 to 20 weeks we do what is called as an anomaly scan anomaly scan again to look at the structure look at the face of the baby number of fingers uh many a times the baby say hi hi or even can lift the legs and show the uh, say uh, all the different uh, yoga positions there so yes you can request your consultant or the doctors to allow your husband or someone to uh, uh, come and witness this but considering the corona scene we are at present not allowing anyone but then as things unfold it will be fine uh anomaly scan is very important to be done between 18 to 22 weeks considering that if we find any major abnormality we need to investigate further to rule out any major uh, not life threatening condition to this baby uh, during this period what we tell is first 3 uh, months uh, most of them try insist that doctor i am not gaining weight or i have lost weight it's quite okay to uh you know um, the not gain weight at this stage not but not to lose uh, significant amount of weight uh considering you were you are having problem eating you have nausea or giddiness usually it's after 12 weeks is when the uh, mother start gaining some amount of weight and then after 24 weeks again comes the final uh, you know countdown for the delivery Uh, which you call it as the third trimester this uh, stage we need to be really very careful few symptoms which you need to be wary of is that how much amount of baby movement happens or uh, roughly how i would uh, put it is between 8 to 8 that is 12 hours in the day if you are having 15 to 20 movements that's good enough or make sure that the movements have a same pattern because baby generally tend to move in the same pattern so if daily you are having a certain amount of pattern of movements and the baby is moving adequately then it's good that, that means the baby is healthy uh, we will not be able to do a scan daily or do a blood test or doppler or check you daily so the best way to make sure the is to make sure that you are taking a good care of your baby's movements so if the baby's movements are 15 to 20 in 12 hours roughly one, one to two movements in an hour should be a, a good uh, you know sense of uh, baby swell be uh, then any pain pain means any lower abdominal pain lower abdominal pain uh, could signify that uh, uterus is contracting or she may be getting into preterm labor any abnormal discharge abnormal discharge are two things one is infection infection could be greenish discharge or frothy or any discharge which is causing itching of the vagina this is a sign of a vaginal infection some patients may experience increased vaginal discharge at this stage which could also mean that they may be uh, there may be a increased risk of having a preterm delivery in this 
So if you are feeling any increased pressure in the pelvis or there is any increased uh, discharge, not necessarily fluid discharge, it can be just a mucus discharge also. If anything of that you have been noticing, then I, it's always better that you inform your gynecologist about this symptom because sometimes this is an indication of a very, very early preterm delivery from happening. Okay. Any deliveries after 34 weeks or 36 weeks is good because 36 weeks onwards we call it as the term baby. So 37, 38, 39, 40 is the term. Anything before that we would call it as a preterm. Not to really worry, but as I said, if you monitor all these uh, symptoms, uh, things can be fine. In the second half, uh, sorry, in this third term, uh, trimester, what we are worried about is the diabetes and hypertension and the growth of the baby. Major growth of the baby happens only after around 24 weeks of gestation. So when you see around 22, 23 weeks, your baby weight will be only around 300, 400, 500. And then many of my mothers are, sir, it's only 400 grams. They said, this is the time when it starts growing. So it's only after 24 weeks. Weeks and many uh, most significant growth happens only after 32 weeks. So around 30, 32 weeks, we have the baby around one, one and a half kgs. So around uh, from 32 weeks onwards, if the baby is around uh, roughly around 1.5 kg around 32 weeks, so by uh, by the time of delivery, it would reach around three kgs. BP monitoring is very important at this stage, considering there is a condition called as pregnancy induced hypertension. Because of the pregnancy and because of all the tension this baby is causing to you, uh, there is likelihood that you may develop uh, high blood pressure, which can be very uh, uh, bad effect on both the baby's growth and on the outcome of the pregnancy. So if we detect BP very early, that is early detection is less than 32 weeks of gestation. Anything after 32 weeks, it's quite safe. But anything below 32 weeks of detection of BP, there are certain predictors which we, again, as I said in the first trimester, when you're doing the scan and the blood test, we would say, okay, uh, whether you are at increased risk or not. So every stage plays an important role to decide what's going to happen in the final uh, de delivery. So yesterday there was one patient who asked me a very simple question. At 20 weeks, doctor, do you think this will be a normal delivery? At 20 weeks, yes, it is not very easy for us to tell uh, whether it's going to be a normal delivery or a cesarean. But if you ask me a question whether it will be a cesarean, I can say that 80% chance that it's not going to be a cesarean. Because if anyone who is conceived, any mother, for us, it is like normal delivery until and not, otherwise there is something really uh, pushing us to consider cesarean. So what is the absolute indication for a cesarean if you say is one is... Uh, where the placenta is completely covering the os, that is the, uh, the outlet of the uterus, that's an absolute indication. If it's a very, very IUGR, that is intrauterine growth restricted baby, that means the baby is at stress, where the fluid level is less and the baby's growth is not optimum, these kind of babies will not tolerate normal delivery. Next is when it's a breach, when abnormal position of the baby. Baby's head is high and the legs are low. Are low. Uh, these are some of the absolute indication. Indications like cord around the neck is not an indication for cesarean. Well, if the mother is short, it's not an indication for cesarean. If uh, a patient is, uh, you know, uh, having a malnutrition or uh, reduced height or if she's anemic, these are all not an indication for cesarean. Even if the fluid around the baby is less, what is less? If the fluid around the baby is less than 5, we would say, okay, it is severe oligamnes. It's still not an indication for a straight away cesarean section. Previous cesarean can also try a normal delivery. So, another very much, very important prerequisite for uh, normal delivery is to, if you can get into normal labor, then the chance of having a normal delivery is as good as 90%. If we induce labor pain because of any other reason or that you have not gone into labor, the chance of delivery is around 72 to 75%. So to get into the normal labor, please be active. That means to say do your normal routine work, your, your household work and walking, exercise, prenatal exercises and uh, strengthening exercises. All this when you do, there is a good chance that you may get into labor. If you take complete rest during pregnancy, which generally happens in our uh, household uh, because if a mother is there, a grandmother is there, that they will say, hey, don't uh, lift this, don't do that, don't climb stairs, don't walk. So if you don't do that, then it's very unlikely that 
you know we are seeing lots of mother not going into labor because they have this extended uh, uh, rest which they are taking hmm? so my advice is be active be active in both in taking care of your pregnancy and consulting us and also uh, physically uh, i think we will uh, uh, i would want to end my talk here considering uh, sonali has more uh, questions lined up uh, probably she will be better person to answer this if anything is there we are ready to take your calls okay thank you and take care um thank you dr sunil thank you dr bhavna that was very insightful um so i'm going to kind of go back and uh, take off and i'm so glad that you know you ended up with saying that uh, uh you know uh, be active because that's my next goal right i'm going to talk about prenatal exercise and uh, etc okay so okay. right so we are going to talk about prenatal exercise next and uh, so we'll show you a few simple uh, postures which uh, you can start doing at home as well Uh, but i'll give you the guidelines the do's and don'ts and you know what you should make sure of before you actually get started so there are lots of benefits of exercise to the mother it's going to reduce the discomforts especially like back pain cramps in the legs etc it also helps to boost your mood and energy levels exercise is one of the things which releases those positive hormones in your system and that is something which is excellent it helps you to sleep better i have mothers who come to my workout classes uh, you know maybe three times a week but they want to come all the six days and maybe the seventh day also if i was ready to work uh, but i'm not i think you know no i i need one day off off as well so keeping that in perspective it actually helps you to sleep better excess weight gain is taken care of because you're obviously you know moving your body improving your metabolism all of that increases your stamina and muscle strength all your pregnancy complications uh, incidences are lower you know so uh, exercise can help to reduce the incidence of gestational diabetes hypertension etc uh, exercise actually helps to loosen up your uh, you know joints ligaments muscles bones makes them more flexible so it's not that it's going to cause labor to happen that's a myth but it actually helps to labor to be smoother once it act, once it starts and post delivery also it helps you to recover much faster and i told you i am i am a mother to two kids and um, for me uh, exercise was something which was a part and parcel of my daily routine i used to do it every day uh, through both my pregnancies and i know that i was up and about on the day that i delivered and i really blessed myself uh, for that as an advantage the uh, important thing to take care of is your posture so while sitting make sure you don't slouch uh, you take good back support like the woman on the right so that uh, you know you don't get back pain while standing try to make sure that your back is tall and erect and you know your shoulders are pushed back and your chest is sticking out so that you know your uh, lower back pain doesn't start because the growing weight of the abdomen is going to cause the the curvature in your lower back to actually increase and that will cause a uh, back pain so these are the two reasons the sitting and standing postures which are the leading causes and the major causes of back pain and many times you know once we correct these the mother kind of says oh my back pain is magically gone uh, before you start any form of exercise please always ask your doctor because the doctor has to give the green signal the doctor has to give the go ahead and uh, one more thing that i would like to say here is that always ask the doctor at every visit doesn't matter if you sound like a broken record and you are asking the same question at every doctor's visit because pregnancy conditions can change so what was true at 16 weeks something may change at 20 weeks something may change at 24 weeks so you should always ask your doctor okay so doctor thank you i mean you know everything is fine i am doing such and such a routine uh, is it okay for me to continue for this month so the doctor will be able to give you that green signal every month during the month if you feel any form of discomfort then you should definitely stop and again check in with the doctor it's fine don't don't think that you're troubling your doctors 
they are actually there to make sure that your pregnancy is healthy and uh, you know you're safe and your baby is also safe okay so we'll start with a few neck rotations uh, it's really simple and you always do your prenatal exercises really slowly so drop your chin to your chest so oh, that's a reminder again just to kind of put it out there you're definitely going to get a recording of the session so you will get uh, you know a view of all these things uh, and there's a little bit of, uh, you know, a little gift voucher at the end. So don't leave just yet. I know it's almost 12 and you're also looking at the clock. But uh, nevertheless, just a little while long, almost, uh, almost there. So very gently drop your chin to the chest. Uh, drop your chin to the chest. Left ear to left shoulder. Back of the head to the back. Right ear to right shoulder and chin to chest and then let's reverse this we're going right back left and forward right uh, i'm showing you just one car one round but you can actually do more of these depending on your convenience it helps to improve the circulation to the head which will ensure uh you know less headaches uh, just overall even good for the thyroid so there are lots of benefits of doing this as an exercise. So especially for mothers who sit in one position, who work at the computer a lot, you should do your wrist rotations. So it's really simple. First rotate it in one direction and then rotate it in another direction, right? And always do it really slowly, especially if you have numbness or you have swelling or you feel that, you know, my uh, fingers are jammed. This is an exercise which can actually improve the circulation in this area. Then you have your foot flexes, uh, which is the same fundamental for people who sit or stand in one position for a long time. So point and flex, and then you can also do nice rotations, both directions. And you can do this sitting, lying down, standing, uh, whatever position you find comfortable to include this. And even if you are like, you know, traveling, you can do this in the car. Uh, this is something which is an important uh, exercise. The butterfly is one of my favorites because it actually prepares your body. It opens out your pelvis. Uh, and in yoga, when you're doing the butterfly flaps, it's considered to be a uterine exercise. It actually massages the uterus. So uh, sitting in a position like this on a mat is really helpful. Uh, you can kind of, you know, bring both your feet together as close to the pelvis as possible and then flap up and down slowly or rapidly. You can sit in this position while watching TV or talking on the phone as well. It's a great labor preparation exercise for you. The cat and camel pose is an excellent exercise for back pain. So when you're in the cat pose where you've got your back arched and you're looking up at the ceiling, that is a good position for uh, lower back. And then you can gently round your back out all the time, keeping your breathing normal. And look down at your navel. So you're making a nice camel hump right there. And you can do this a few times uh, a day, but I would recommend doing it on a mat and not on the bed. The pelvic tilt is also excellent for lower back pain. And it's a really simple exercise. You're lying down flat on the mat with your feet on the floor and the knees pointing to the ceiling. Keep your hands right next to your buttocks and slowly raise your buttocks off the floor. Again, keeping your breathing absolutely normal. Don't hold your breath anywhere. Leg raises is also very, very helpful for labor preparation. So you're lying down straight on the floor, making sure that your body is not tilted back in front. Lower leg is folded and I would recommend raising the upper leg all the way to 90 degrees. I'll let you in on a little secret. My class does about 32 for each leg. But I wouldn't recommend that you start with 32 because you're definitely going to curse me. So start with about 8 to 10 counts for each leg. And as your strength and stamina build up, then you can start increasing the number of counts that you do as well. This is a very famous pregnancy squat. As you can see, I'm demonstrating or I've got this demonstration with a chair. So having a firm chair or you can use a wall for support so that you don't kind of, you know, uh, wobble or lose your balance. 
make your make sure your legs are really wide spread and your toes are pointing out and go down slowly and gently all the way till your thighs are parallel to the ground so we're doing half squats as far as possible during pregnancy you can start your duck walks only once the doctor gives you the green signal because the recommendation at least from my end is the duck walk should be done when the baby's head has engaged in the pelvis deep breathing is something which is extremely important for pregnancy uh so just sit back comfortably place one hand on your chest and place the other hand on your abdomen take a deep breath in long inhalation and exhale inhale exhale one more time inhale exhale right we would expect you to do about 40 to 50 deep breaths every day in a non air conditioned environment preferably in the morning when the pollution is at the lowest this actually helps to build your lung capacity and it also helps to strengthen your abdominal muscles and both of these are going to be very helpful in uh in the second stage where you're pushing that baby out and of course because your lung capacity gets built up you will have less breathlessness issues during pregnancy kegels are your pelvic floor exercises which are an excellent strengthening and toning exercise kegels helps to prevent urinary incontinence so when you kind of you know laugh cough sneeze a little urine leaks that could be prevented uh the delivery becomes a little bit more better faster you might prevent tears uh especially in the pushing stage of labor and it also helps you to get back to shape faster as far as your vagina is concerned post delivery i would also suggest that this is an exercise that you do lifelong not just during pregnancy and postpartum because if your pelvic floor is strong and this is your pelvic floor it actually holds your entire torso so even though the main organs that it's holding is your bladder your uterus and your bowels it also holds the, the organs above it so your intestines your stomach your liver your kidneys everything the pelvic floor is like a hammock and it holds all of these organs so um, you should definitely strengthen this because it will help uh, you even later in life and the way to do this is just don't do it in the bathroom of course but imagine that you're trying to stop the flow of urine hold it in and release hold it in and release all the time keeping your breathing normal and do not tighten your abdominal muscles let's try a few more hold it in and release hold and release one more time hold and release how many are we going to do i would ideally recommend about 150 to 200 during pregnancy every day but it doesn't mean that you have to do all of these at one shot you can do about 15 to 20 and you can keep breaking it up if you ask me what i do is every time my phone rings i do a few giggles right right now in this pandemic situation every time i do a webinar i do a few giggles and trust me i do a lot of webinars right so whatever your trigger whatever works for you is what you have to do as far as your giggles are concerned um so i'm going to show you a very quick uh video when is a parent born when your world changes in a moment nani or when the moment is celebrated by all when you start learning again or with a new role is it your child's first breath or is it just a feeling parents are born when they fulfill a responsibility Your child's umbilical cord blood can provide protection from 80 life-threatening diseases. Keep it safe with Asia's largest stem cell bank, Cord Life. One chance, one choice. It's really odd why this did not want to play. All right, so as I promised you that uh, there is a lovely gift voucher for you and this comes to you from Mom's Joy. 
and this is a maternity wear brand so you can do a little bit of shopping and um, you know maybe of course it's not going to come to you for diwali but if you have a baby shower coming up if you have something special coming up you can definitely indulge and uh, pick up uh, you know a few interesting items for yourself so the cord life team will be getting in touch with you uh, 48 hours or so after the session and they will a share this voucher b they're going to also uh, you know give you a recording of this presentation and if you wish to learn more about stem cell banking then you could also book a direct presentation with them so that they can explain to you whatever uh, benefits there are for uh, yourself your baby and your family These are some books which are written by me. Um, the first is Prenatal Fitness, which is all about exercise during pregnancy and postpartum. This entire book is full of pictures, so there are almost a hundred plus exercises with pictures and explanation available on Amazon. Parenting Mantras is a short, concise, quick read which talks about all the things that happen after the baby is born. So again, available on Amazon. and super mom's recipes are uh, food items which you can make for your baby once your baby starts eating solids so that is something that you could consider also picking up off amazon and uh, my the floor is now open to questions i can see that there aren't any in the box just yet but if you have any post them in the meanwhile i have put all my contact details out here whether it's my um uh, website Uh, my Instagram and Facebook. So my Instagram is at Sonali Shivlani. I changed that a little bit. Um, I forgot to change it on this slide. I also have a channel on YouTube which is called the Pregnancy Coach by Baby Three Sixty Degrees. So please make sure that you subscribe because I am posting a new video there every week related to pregnancy, birth, and the periods after, even all the way till parenting. So that's like a lot of content. other numbers that are there on the screen are numbers of the cord life team and i would strongly suggest that you start making a note of these because uh, in case you know you don't uh, get a call you can also call the cord life team for your voucher and the recording of this session or to book your presentation so whatever you find comfortable calling whatsapp a toll free number or if you'd like to send an sms please make sure that you make all the notes and uh, you can get in touch with them so that they will help you out with that okay so i am ready for questions uh, uh i don't have any yet is is there, would anybody like to ask any questions i'm really happy to answer them anything on diet exercise any of the things that we covered today for you I'm hoping that you found the session helpful and a little feedback would be really nice. So if you can put that in the question box what you felt about the session I know Dr Sunil mentioned that you know there there is a whole uh battery of sessions that he is planning uh for you. Uh so just uh, maybe you could put some feedback uh, for us so that will help us plan the future sessions as well. So I'm just going to wait for another minute either for feedback or questions and then we'll close. I hope you had a great time and uh thank you for joining us on this morning. Uh once again thank you to the Cord Life team for organizing this amazing platform to which we can talk to you in the comfort of your home. Thank you to Dr Sunil and Dr Bhavna for giving us the opportunity to speak to all of you lovely mamas. um thank you so much once again and have a super day ahead stay safe stay healthy and a very happy pregnancy to you